Take a look at this guy right here. That thing is absolutely huge. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? I hope everybody out there is having an incredible day. It's a beautiful morning here on the homestead, trying to get a few things done before we have some record heat this afternoon. But on today's video, I want to give you an update on our determinate tomato trials behind me here. Those five different varieties that we're growing. We did an update earlier when we were starting to get some early harvest on those. We're starting to get some good harvest now, so we kind of want to give you an update on that. I think we have another big Zach tomato that's worthy of weigh-in for our big mater competition. And then I want to show you something kind of unfortunate that happened with our giant pumpkins. Who knows what else we'll get into today. So here's our almost two rows of determinate tomatoes where we have five different varieties growing. Five plants of each of those five varieties. And these things have been producing really well for us the last few weeks getting a lot of big harvest off these and as you can see there's still quite a few green tomatoes on there so we're not quite done yet and the plants are hanging in there pretty well considering all that they've had to deal with this year so with this almost two rows of determinate tomatoes here I've harvested about between three and four or five gallon bucketfuls over the last couple of weeks. So a considerable amount of tomatoes we're getting off just these two rows here. Now, we've been doing a decent amount of canning. I showed you that pasta sauce a couple of videos ago. I think we've put up about between 30 and 35 jars of it, which is plenty for us. So we did all the canning we're gonna do. We're still saving a few to eat for sandwiches and stuff like that, cook with a little bit. But now we're in what I call the giveaway phase on these maters. We pretty much used all we need to use for canning. So now we're sharing with other folks who wanna, you know, can some maters, whether that be salsa, pasta sauce, you know, stewed tomatoes, whatever. Now late, late yesterday, I came out here and harvested everything that was starting to turn color and there might be a few green ones in there that fell off during the process but i got them all separated here in bins for each of the five varieties and so we want to take a look at these and do a little more comparison on these varieties and see which ones are producing more see which ones make better looking tomatoes amongst all those five varieties we have planted over there now before we look at the actual tomatoes, I'll give you a little quick recap on the plant health. And that's kind of the same as it was last time. Red Snapper has the most vigorous, healthy looking plants of any of these five varieties. We've got the Roadster and Rambler plants down there. Look pretty good. They just don't get quite as big as these Red Snapper plants. And then the plants that look the worst would be the ones from this Thunderbird variety and this Grand Marshal variety down here, which is what we saw when we compared these varieties earlier in the season. So these two varieties don't seem to have the plant vigor that those three over there do, but as we'll see in a minute when we look at the tomatoes, that may not matter a whole lot. Okay, so I'll go through each of these bins, tell you what each of these varieties are, then we can take a closer look. And just to note here, some of these tomatoes look okay, some of them look kind of rough, starting to get a little bit of leaf-footed bug damage on some of these, so they're not all perfect, but they're still all, you know, great for canning, nothing wrong with eating any of these that I saved yesterday. So, right here in the first bin, we have Thunderbird, then we have Grand Marshal, right here we have red snapper we have roadster and then we have rambler on the end so let's start off with thunderbird here now this variety didn't impress us much in that earlier evaluation of it and it's still not impressing me a whole lot the production on it has increased but the tomatoes on this variety for some reason are kind of small so just kind of mediocre production that we've been getting so far we didn't get a huge run of early production on these just okay production now but a lot of small tomatoes in there and then we have grand marshall here now this one is a little baffling to me because those plants look so rough but we're getting a lot of fruits off those five plants even though they look like they're about dead so as far as number of tomatoes go grand marshall is our most productive variety so far 
Now, it doesn't make the biggest tomatoes. They're a little bit bigger than Thunderbird there, but not as big as some of the varieties I'll show you in a minute. But as far as numbers go, we're getting loads and loads of tomatoes off those Grand Marshall plants. And then next we have Red Snapper here. Now it looks like we didn't get a lot of those tomatoes and we didn't this time. But sometimes when we're doing these comparisons, it's not quite fair. Cause last time when I harvested all these, I got a bunch of Red Snappers. So what you see here is not necessarily representative of what the variety has been giving us. But still, this makes the biggest and prettiest tomato of all these varieties here. And that's one of the reasons I've always liked red snapper so much. In addition to the plant vigor, just makes really big fruits. I like big maters, and I cannot lie. Those other brothers can't deny. And then lastly here, we have Roadster, and then we have Rambler. And these two are probably the most similar of all these five varieties that we planted. So, got some nice fruit size on the roadster there some nice beautiful tomatoes not quite as big as red snapper but beautiful tomatoes nonetheless kind of the same thing with rambler here nice pretty looking tomatoes still not getting as much on these as we're getting with that grand marshal over there but i do like the looks of these fruits a little better than those grand marshal fruits so our determinate tomato harvest at this point in the season kind of in the later part of the determinate tomato grow out tells us a little bit more than we could see in that early look that we did a few videos ago and it's hard to kind of rank these because it just depends on what you're looking for in a tomato variety do you want just sheer production you're going for the highest number of tomatoes you can get off x amount of plants or are you wanting some larger fruits just depends on what you like that may determine which of these varieties would be your go-to. Now I will say that amongst all those five varieties, Thunderbird is still the least impressive for me. I probably won't grow that one again. Now that's not to say that Thunderbird might not perform well for some of you in other parts of the country, but for me down here, I haven't been that impressed by it. Low plant vigor and low production and the fruits aren't that big. Now someone mentioned a few videos ago that Thunderbird was designed to be a fall variety so it may do a lot better in fall than it has done in spring. I don't know that I'm going to give it a shot in the fall. So Thunderbird right now has fallen off my list. It's not one that I would grow again. Now if you're just growing tomatoes for canning and size doesn't really matter that much, I think Grand Marshall is the way to go. Every time we harvest all these tomato varieties here, we get more tomatoes from Grand Marshall than we do any of the other varieties. Yeah, the plants look pitiful, but it doesn't seem to matter that much. The fruits aren't that big, they're kind of just average size, but we're getting lots and lots of them. So I think that's a great canning tomato, the Grand Marshall there. Now, if you're wanting some good production, but maybe a little larger fruit size, I think Roadster or Rambler both are good options for you. Both of those seem to be pretty much kind of tit for tat as far as production and fruit size go. Really good varieties. Roadster, this is our second time growing it. Still impressed with that variety. So you're gonna get a little bigger fruit size from those, still a good bit of production. And then lastly, we have the Red Snapper, which is gonna grow those massive tomatoes, just beautiful, beautiful fruits, the prettiest fruits out of all these varieties here. So if you wanna make a real big mater sandwich, maybe if you're selling tomatoes, those would look great at a roadside or a market farm stand. So if size matters to you, Red Snapper is the way to go. So no real stinkers here amongst these five varieties besides maybe the Thunderbird in my case. All the rest of the varieties have done really well. I'd recommend them to anybody. It just depends on what you're looking for. And now that we've done our comparison, I'll consolidate all these to one or two baskets or so. And these are going to Brooklyn's grandma. She's been wanting to do some canning. And since we've already done all the canning we need to do, it's time to share the Mater love with everybody else. Now we need to take a quick look at our indeterminate tomatoes, see if we've got anything out there that is two pounds or more. That's what we're gonna need to compete with Eddie over there at Poor Boy's Little Homestead. 
Now I harvested a good many of these a few days ago, so there's not many ripe fruits on the vine. And just for comparison's sake, we've got about the same number of plants we have here in this indeterminate plot that we do in that determinate plot over there. We're getting about three times the tomatoes over there from the determinates compared to what we're getting from these indeterminates, which is kind of expected. The determinates make a lot more tomatoes in a smaller window, but we're still getting some good production off these. Now the one I did leave the other day because I wanted to see if it would get any bigger would be this big Zach right here. That's the one we need to check and weigh. Now I actually have two here that I want to weigh. We got this big Zach, which is for our competition. Well, what I found is that this Georgia Street variety actually makes the biggest maters of all the varieties I have planted. Take a look at this guy right here. That thing is absolutely huge. Now these monsters like this, they don't hold up very well. They split on the bottom. So I probably need to eat this one today. But this is the biggest mater I've grown so far this year. This one doesn't count for our competition because it's not the right variety. But just something to note, if you want to grow some really, really big ones, they're, you know, really, really tasty and fun to grow. This Georgia streak might be one you want to try. Okay, so we got our scale zeroed out here. We'll start with this massive Georgia streak mater. Just to see what it weighs. I've been really trying to grow a two pound plus mater this year. And that looks like we did it. So we got two pounds, four ounces on that monster there. Although it doesn't really count for our competition. Still fairly noteworthy. Now for this big Zach here, I don't think we're going to get two pounds on this. Let's see. It does feel a little more dense than that other one. Woo! Mighty, mighty close. I think that's a hair bit bigger than the last one we did. Let me turn around here. Look at it close. Ah, uh, that's kind of about, you know, one pound, 14 and a half ounces. It's between 14 and 15 ounces. So a hair bit bigger than that last one we did. Still not getting two pounds on the big Zach, but getting really, really close. All right, now that we've got the maters covered, I want to show you something unfortunate that happened with one of our big giant pumpkins. But on the way over there, I'm going to stop and show you something that's just absolutely beautiful to me. So before we get to the pumpkins, I want to show y'all these giant marigolds here. Aren't these pretty? Just loaded up with blooms down there. And this is the way to support these plants with the Florida weave like we did here. This is holding them up really nicely, except for one spot down there on the end. I'll show you in a minute. But I'm really liking this technique for these giant marigolds, which just get big and loaded down with these heavy blooms. I need to come through here and cut all these blooms off so they'll keep growing. I cut a good many off yesterday for Brooklyn. We've got a nice mixture of orange and yellow here. We did alternate when we planted these. Planted an orange plant, then a yellow plant, then an orange plant. You can't really tell. We've got a nice variety of the colors here. I really like the yellow ones. First time growing that one. The oranges are pretty too. And this just adds some really nice beauty to our flower plot here. Now on this end of the row, we got a little bit of leaning going on here with our trellis. I've already ran two lines of string, but I probably need to run another one. Plants haven't broken here, but they're leaning over quite a bit. It'll probably help when I cut some of these heavy flower blooms off. That may stand them up a little bit more, but I'm probably going to have to run at least one more line of string to get these back upright like those towards the front of the row. But even though we've got a little sagging here, I'm still really liking the Florida weave for these. Working much better than the healing we did last year on these. And now for the giant pumpkin update. Now when I show you what I'm about to show you, a lot of you are gonna go, I told you so. And you're right. Sometimes I'm a little bit stubborn and I have to learn for myself. And I've definitely done that. So for our field pumpkins here, they pretty much done all they're gonna do. We had two of them that are, you know, kind of small. This one here is our biggest one. Not sure how much it weighs, but I can pick it up and put it on a scale. I think the record for these is around 200 pounds. We didn't get close to that, but that's our biggest field pumpkin there. So we'll save some of those seeds and may try again with those next year. Now here's one of our Atlantic giant pumpkins and 
this one hasn't grown much lately i think it's pretty much as big as it's going to get it started turning kind of orange color here it's a beautiful giant pumpkin i don't know quite how much it weighs i've had to guess i'd probably say around i don't know 100 and 150 pounds something like that the folks at heavenly hills homestead sent me a link to a calculator where you can measure the pumpkin and it'll give you an approximate weight so i need to try doing that but i think i can pick this one up it's not too too heavy so nowhere close to a thousand pounds but it's still a pretty little pumpkin now this one right here is the one i was holding out hope for this was the one i thought was going to be our monster until i came out here yesterday and saw this it has ruptured on us man i sure was thinking this one was going to get up to maybe close to 500 pounds or so but it's definitely not going to do that now it's done growing and it's probably going to start rotting pretty soon now a lot of y'all told me that i need to cover these things i need to build some kind of little shade canopy for them and i just never got around to doing it and now we paid for it right there i think it just got too hot for that big a pumpkin out here and it just ruptured if we would have had blanket over it or shade cloth over it that might not have happened lesson learned i'll definitely make sure to give it some shade next time so we didn't come close to growing any monsters as far as our giant pumpkins go but we did better than we did last year so as long as we're making some slow improvement that's good enough for me we're learning a good bit every year as we do this and hopefully next year we can grow some even bigger ones so my plans are to save seeds from the largest pumpkins out here. I don't know if we'll get any viable seeds from that one that ruptured, but that other Atlantic giant over there, we should get plenty of seeds from it. And talking to the folks at Heavenly Hills Homestead, they tell me that those world record genetics should still be in those seeds, even though they didn't get that big here for us in one generation. So those seeds still have the potential to grow a really, really big pumpkin if it's done right obviously i didn't do everything exactly like i was supposed to do it so i'm going to harvest a bunch of seeds from these probably way more than i'll need y'all let me know in the comments below if you'd like to try some of these giant pumpkin seeds and if so we'll try to harvest enough to put some on the website at some point so i hope you enjoyed the video today nice to get some more conclusive results from those determinate tomato trials i will say this though don't go solely by my results or my recommendations in determining which varieties you're going to grow my disease pressure here my growing conditions here could be the same as where you are but they could also be completely different so you might not always get the same results i do think the characteristics of the fruit size are going to be true no matter where you grow them so that's definitely something to consider if you want a big fruit go red snapper if you don't care about fruit size go with one of those smaller fruited but more productive varieties and if you want to grow some absolutely huge and tasty indeterminate tomatoes I'd highly recommend giving this Georgia streak variety a try here. I think we got these seeds from seeds and such. And if you've grown a two plus pound mater so far this year, definitely share that with me in the comments below. Let me know which variety it was that got that big. And don't forget if you want to participate in our big mater competition, all you got to do is post a picture of your Kellogg's or your big Zach mater on a scale, share it on Facebook or Instagram, tag Lazy Dog Farm, and then use the hashtag Big Mater, one word. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to check out our affiliate links below. A lot of great companies that we use in our gardens here at Lazy Dog Farm. Even got some coupon codes for some of those companies so you can take advantage of those discounts. Don't forget to go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com, where we've got hats, shirts, garden blog recipes recommended products all kind of good stuff over there if you did enjoy this video make sure to subscribe hit that notification button like and share and we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm oh,